Bloody hell, are we still doing these? Boom! Late crate this month. I was off at the old comic convention when this arrived, and now we've had all the Halloween stuff, and by the time I've got round to it, you've probably seen every other bastard on the internet open it and show you what's in it by now. In fact, I'm probably the only person who doesn't know. Well, saying that, I know that there's a t-shirt inside it, and what's on the t-shirt, because somebody showed me at MCM. Anyway, loot crate. This time it's a uh, fear. Here is the mighty theme, because of course, Halloween and all that. Anyway, I've already cut the cellar tape. Let us open. Oh my goodness, that's orange. Wrench O Rama. Hmm, bit of a zombie apocalypse going on there. I'm getting a hint of Dead Rising, thanks to the uh, Trombon servbot head there, which you can't see because it's in the wrong shape. I'll show you later. And on top, here's the t shirt, what I've already seen. It is basically. Kittens! Lovely fluffy kittens, lovely fluffy kittens, but in a Salvador Dali type reveal, move it to a distance, and it is a skull. A skull of kittens with slightly dodgy teeth, but we'll let them off. I quite like that. It's an interesting design, and it's not something sort of explicitly referencing something or uh, advertising something, so that's quite nice. Makes a nice change. Plus, it looks weird from a distance. Look up close, and it's kittens. That's quite amusing. I'll give you that. Nice t-shirt. Let's look at something else, like, for instance, this book. Survival 714, Official Guide to Staying Alive. Oh, that's good. I like staying alive. How to Survive a Sharknado and Other Unnatural Disasters Cashing in on the Success of a Minor Film. Uh, Fight Back When Monsters and Mother Nature Attack by Andrew Schaffer with contributions by Finn Shepard and April Wexler. Tremendous. So, presumably, this is like a survival guide for things that could never happen. Uh, prehistoric Cave Bear. Yep, I'm pretty sure they're all dead now. Manticore. That is a problem in Lowestoft. Um, so it tells you the vitals, uh, so it gives you a little description, uh, things to avoid, how to treat manticore poisoning, basilisk, look, ah, there we are, in case you're in a Harry Potter book. Um, basically, this looks quite amusing, I think. Ooh, very good number of pages as well, nicely designed, quite like the illustrations. Yeah, this is good, I like this, what's the... Uh, Recommended retail price. That's well, from the Sci-Fi Channel. How bizarre. Why did Sci-Fi change their names? That stupid Sci-Fi thing they've got going on. God, that's annoying. Um, yeah, it doesn't give a price. Not that I really mind that much. It's more about what you get out of it than what it's worth. Or some bollocks like that. Yeah, oh, quite like that. I look forward to reading that with my eyes and brain. Good, I'm liking this one so far. Now we've got a colour picture on a bit of cardboard. Is it just one of these? Yeah, they definitely want to keep this um, safe, don't they? Oh, brother. I don't know what this is a reference to. Right, it's looking a bit um, shack in the background. Zombies going on. Right, um, zombies and brothers could be supernatural. They're brothers who hunt things. I'm guessing more this is probably Walking Dead, which I still haven't read the comics of or seen. Um, it's very hard to get into these American TV series. There's always a million billion bloody episodes. It seems like, you know, an endless task and you've got to spend the rest of your life to watch them all. And the problem with The Walking Dead is every single person has said to me, oh, the first series is great, then the second one's crap, and the third one's not great either, then it gets good with the fourth. And I'm like, what, so I've got to sit through, like, God knows how many episodes. They have at least 9,000 episodes every series in America, don't they? And um, I've got to sit through all these ones and all this filler in order to get to the good... Oh, you've put me off now. Which is a shame, because I've already bought the Blu-rays. So, yeah, we've got what looks like a sort of zombie Richard Simmons with his hand replaced by a large Stanley knife blade having a go at somebody with no nose and a beard who's crying. Why has he got a nose and he hasn't? I don't know. Why is it on a bit of cardboard? I don't know. It still would have been right in the box. I mean, the posters got scr quite scratched up the other week and they didn't care. Weird. Next. Ooh, Loot Crate Slashes and Bites. Does it really? Well, uh, I hope its mother has a word with it. So, temporary tattoos, blah, blah, blah. Skin should be clean and free of oils and makeup. That'll be the day. Remove clear protective... Red cloth... Oh, yeah, it's one of these sort of things. So, what can we make it look like we've got? Scratches. Zombie mouth. That's the last thing you want to catch or somebody when you're kissing them. Vampire bite. Zombie bite. And werewolf bite. So you can look like you've been messed up and that you've got half your face missing. Sounds like fun. Well, that's a little extra thing. Not too impressed without the picture, frankly. Oh, looks like there's going to be something with old-fashioned stereoscopic 3D on, by the looks of it, on the grounds that we've got. 
the obvious red and blue glasses. Or maybe it's a cosplay set for that twat who was always hanging around in the Back to the Future movies. We may never know. Wasn't there somebody who always wore those in Greece as well? I can't remember. Curse Voice. Pardon. Fast and free voice communication for gamers. Marvellous. Get the most out of Smite with Curse Voice. Smite, Battleground of the Gods. Unlock Thanatos, ooh, God of um, Death or something or other, and exclusive Jack the Reaper skin. Marvellous. I have never heard of this in my life. Enjoy the game. So it's a game, but it's also a voice service. I'm very confused. There's a code on it. If you saw it earlier when I was putting it in, feel free to stick it into your thing and use it, because I really don't care. Right, next up. Oh, God. There's several things knocking around there. Let's go for this. Ah, the Loot Crate magazine, with lots of 3D enjoyment for you, for that late 70s nausea that you get from such things. Hang on, I'll put the glasses on. Ooh, spooky. Ooh. Problem is, this all seems a bit crap now that we've got, um, uh, what do you call it, it's proper 3D on at the cinema. And by proper, I mean slightly disappointing stereoscopic stuff that if it isn't exactly correctly projected gives you a headache and I try and avoid, frankly. But hey, that's good fun. I like that. It makes me hate their um, quite expensive looking magazine less than I normally do. So 100 points for that. And a bag with a comic in. And a bit of cardboard. It is The Waking Fred, or similar. And yep, it's got the Loot Crate thing on the front again. They're getting quite into this exclusive Loot Crate branded comics, aren't they? This one's been signed by persons, um, or maybe just not actually signed and just made to look like a signature. Well, I'm probably not going to read number 132 without reading the preceding 131, um, which I probably will do, actually, rather than look at the TV series, I think, ultimately. So, what's that? I smell eBay. <clears throat> Next, that bloody badge nobody gives a shit about. And, oh, sweetie, don't give us sweeties, guys, because they don't survive, especially the boiled sweet type ones, like these toxic waste. Uh, they don't survive the old um, transatlantic trip. They get hot and then they get cold and then they go funny. Anyway, this is a black cherry, artificially flavoured, super sour thing. And they are indeed very sour and extremely sticky, because, you know, distance and heat and all that. Mmm. Mmm. Sourness. Let's have a quick look at the box before we look at this box. It's quite intriguing. Hamburger fiefdom. That sounds familiar. Uh, cool plums is sour. Annie's old fashioned shanks. Ah. Perhaps I should have just turned it upside down at the start and seen Dead Rising 3 Loot Crate exclusive from Capcom. That's given that away. Ah, so this is indeed a bit of a hint for the old Dead Rising. A little diorama for you. Yeah, that's quite nice, one supposes. I quite like that they do these things inside the boxes now. A little bit of added value for you. Unless, of course, it costs a fortune and they could have put that into more stuff to go inside. And as always, the Konami code. Marvellous. So, finally, we've got high hopes for this one. My goodness, not remember these beacons being quite as sour. As my aunt used to say, it draws your ass up to your elbows. Right, uh, this is sellotape, so we're going to have to attack it comme ça. What is it inside? Is it a little statue of that boring mechanic man who replaced Frank West? No. I don't know what this is. Oh! It's one of the weapons you make by duct taping a circular saw onto the end of a large sledgehammer. Marvellous. That's quite nicely detailed. That doesn't spin, which is a sh- oh. Oh, it's a pen! Well, golly gee goodness. That's quite a nice thing, that. I quite like it. I kind of feel it feels kind of like a promotional item. Um, you know, like an advertising thing rather than something you'd necessarily go out and buy. But uh, hey, it's a pen and it looks quite nifty in itself. If you like Dead Rising 3, that's probably a good thing. I still haven't played it, actually. I really like the first Dead Rising, so I haven't got around to playing the second one. I really should do that. I'll probably go for the f um, off-the-record version because it's got Frank West in it and he's covered wars. Anyway, well, it started off quite nicely. Uh, I like the t-shirt. I like the book. Um, that I don't really care about the comic because it's just one of many. You'll have either, you know, it's kind of pointless because you'll either have already had it in order or you won't have read the previous hundreds for it to mean anything. The uh, DLC thing looks like tat. This is, well, this is quite nice, actually, I suppose. But overall, eh, it was never going to reach the rather dizzying heights of last month's lovely alien figure, etc. And indeed it didn't. <laughs> there we go. Subscribe for more.